Welcome to Antelope Island, the largest island in the Great Salt Lake here in northern Utah. This is part four of a four-part series I put together uh, with a hike up this ridge. You can't see the lower part from here. Coming up this ridge to the west, looking at four distinct rock units, uh, explaining the rocks themselves and their story on this just beautiful spring day, uh, looking east to the majestic Wasatch Range with lots of snow still up there uh, here in late April. I guess it's mid-April technically. Um, thanks for joining me. My name is Sean Wilsey, geology professor at the College of Southern Idaho. Uh, I'm happy to have you along for this little adventure and I'm hoping we can learn together as we explore these rocks, make some observations, uh, hopefully identify them, and then more importantly, piece together the story that they might be able to tell us. So we've come up in the last three parts to this series. Uh, this is kind of the, the head of this ridge, which drops off a couple hundred feet down to the road and the lake level. The dark rocks on this knoll over here were the diamictites, the dark uh, sedimentary units from the Snowball Earth episode that were featured in part two, part two. And just this side of those dark units, there, it's a subtle outcrop and it's not very large. In part three, we looked at some dolostone, some pink dolostone that caps those diamictites and are related to this Snowball Earth story. Uh, we came across this sort of boulder field here, which is along one of the shorelines from ancient Lake Bonneville. And those boulders are actually weathered out of the outcrops that I'm standing on right here. So this is our part four. We've come up the ridge. We started at the bottom in part one in the Proterozoic about 1.8 billion years ago. We arrived at part two and three, looking at some diamictite and dolostone that's about 720 to 650 million years ago. And now we've just crossed another fairly substantial unconformity. And now we're in rocks that are Cambrian in age. So these rocks are about 500 uh, to 550 or so million years ago. Uh, making a few observations here. It looks like they're this tan to beige colored. Um, in places, they contain large rounded particles, gravel sized particles, golf ball size in most places of rock. In other places, it looks like it's much more fine grained. And so the particle size is, is much smaller. These rocks are incredibly hard and resistant. Um, one of the most resistant rocks that's on the planet. We can also see that the gravel layers actually form distinct layers in the rock. We've got a gravel layer here, then a sand, sort of a sandy interval, then another gravel layer running through the rock, and another one there. Now these boulders around my feet are all eroded. So let's head up to the actual outcrop here, the rocks that are in place, and see what we can glean from these rocks. Uh, so again, these cobbles or I guess gravel sized particles cemented in the rock itself. Looks like most of these are pure quartz or quartzites of various colors. Uh, in fact, the, the rock is almost exclusively made out of these quartzite and quartz gravel sized particles. We would call then this a very mature sedimentary deposit, meaning whatever the source area is, even if it contained mostly quartz, um, well, if it didn't contain mostly quartz, if there were other rocks present, we would expect that the quartz would break up and sort of pulverize those other rock particles. So by the time we get to this point, um, we're just seeing the quartz being the primary constituent in the rock. Uh, over here, if we look at the grain size, it's a little more towards the sand size and a little bit uh, maybe pebbly in places. Um, so these are sedimentary rocks. I think we'd all agree that uh, in places where we have these gravel sized particles, because the gravel sized particles, their shape tends to be fairly well rounded overall. Um, some of them are broken like this one, but you can see the overall shape of the class tends to be 
a little bit more rounded than anything. So I think it would be appropriate to call this rock a conglomerate. Here's a one of the bigger class I've seen so far. That one's maybe um, a couple inches, three inches maybe in diameter. But also in places where the gravel is less dominant, we would maybe call it a sandstone. Now the sandstone here has been fused together such that the sand grains are actually um, binding together and it doesn't really feel like most sandstones very gritty. So this is actually a Cambrian unit called the Tintic, T-I-N-T-I-C, quartzite. Um, doesn't make much sense, but it's what we would call an ortho quartzite. Basically, this was a sandstone that must have got buried deep enough that the pressure of the overlying rocks caused the particles to fuse together such that now when the rock breaks, it doesn't break around the sand grains, it tends to break right through them. Um, the bottom of the tinted quartzite is a little more gravel rich, and that's why we're seeing so much of this gravel uh, that kind of pops as you look at it here. Um, we look up at this outcrop here, we seems to have a hint of bedding. So it looks to me like the rock layer here is gently dipping to the left, which is to the west. Um, there's obviously a large fracture there, but even more importantly, I can see some changes in the particle size. I can see gravel rich particles up here and then more of a sandy bed down low. And so this would indicate that whatever was transporting these sediments, um, the energy level was fluctuating to some degree. At times it was having, it has, it had enough energy, high enough energy that it was moving dominantly these gravel sized particles, these golf ball and almost baseball sized particles of gravel. And at other times the energy waned a little bit such that it was mainly moving and transporting these smaller pebbles and sand sized particles here. Um, these have been studied and analyzed and based on where the continents were at the time and all the available evidence here, this Cambrian age unit was deposited near the shore of ancient North America. So here in Northern Utah, we were actually on the coastline of the North American continent before California, Oregon, Washington, and most of Nevada even existed. So these rocks represent some of the old shoreline deposits that were uh, deposited at that time. We'll walk a little bit further because we're right near the crest of the, the ridge line here on the island. And a few more outcrops here of this Cambrian age tintic quartzite. But then we get a great view off to the west, looking down into uh, White Rock Bay. This uh, big knob over here is called Elephant Head. Uh, Antelope Island, just really great place to recreate. We got someone mountain biking, one of the trails they have out here. Um, and most of the island is made of these, these three or four rock types that we've been exploring here today. So uh, just in summary with these four parts, we started in part one looking at basement rocks, metamorphic igneous intrusive rocks formed by high temperatures and pressures, rocks that formed miles, tens of miles beneath a large mountain range about 1.8 billion years ago. We worked our way up the ridge and in part two, we saw um, parts two and three, we saw evidence for a massive glacial event that potentially covered the entire planet between about 720 and 650 million years ago. That was our very latest Neo-Proterozoic age rocks. And now here at the top of the ridge on this beautiful day, we're looking at these Cambrian aged rocks that were deposited uh, on a beach or a shoreline at the edge of North America about 500 million years ago. So just consider the the how much geologic change it would take to go from the underbelly of a mountain range the rocks we saw in part one to surface glaciers carrying large rocks um, for parts two and three to finally having this quiescent 
shoreline of North America where we had streams flowing into it, wave action that was moving around the gravel and the sand and depositing it to form these deposits here. So I hope you've enjoyed this, this little series here. Um, this was a real pleasure for me because I have great memories of Antelope Island. Uh, I did some undergrad research here. Just fun days recreating out here. It's one of my favorite places, but make sure you come either when it's sufficiently windy or not in the heat of summer because there are some uh, bugs out here that can make your day pretty grueling and somewhat miserable. Um, but in the winter time, in the early spring or in the late fall, it's just a magical place to be. And so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, as always, if you uh, can donate and support the videos and content I produce, it would be much appreciated. There's the donate button on the banner of the YouTube page, um, a thanks button at the bottom of the screen to the right, and under the video description, there's also some information there if you can help support uh, my geologic exploits and sharing some of Earth's amazing geology and landscapes with you. So until next time, we'll see you from Antelope Island State Park in Northern Utah.